Today, I'm going to make a case to you why I believe 80% of college students ought to drop out, and I'm going to make a case why it makes sense for them to drop out. Now, before you jump to conclusion with anything I'm about to say, my, my encouragement to you is watch the whole thing because I have one purpose with today's video. My purpose with today's video is not to uh, propose that education is a terrible thing. I've read over a thousand books in my life as a self-educated person, and I haven't had a four-year degree. I'm a college dropout myself. It's not about education isn't a good thing. It's the fact that I am not a fan of what's happening with our current educational system, and I'm too concerned with the fact that we are more like robots following this, and no one's questioning it. We're just kind of doing it through, through peer pressure, and we're just saying this is what we're supposed to do. So this is a video I would want you to share. If you're watching this and you're a college student, share it with your parents. If you're watching this, your parents, share it with your kids. If you're watching this, share it with the professor, the dean, the university. I've spoken to so many different universities about this, and many times they get upset about it, but it's my strong opinions as an entrepreneur why I believe in this. Now, before I get into my points, I'm going to talk about who should drop out, who should stay in school, why do we go to college, what new curriculums we ought to consider adding to the school system, the cost of books on what it really costs them to make it versus how much they sell our students on how much the book costs. I'm going to talk about all that stuff, but before I get into it, think about this here. I think one of the biggest challenges we have today is peer pressure, and I'll explain to you peer pressure. A lot of times, we think college is what we have to do because the kids have a peer pressure of my friends getting accepted to UC Berkeley or you know, UT or FSU and, and, and Jacksonville or NYU, so I got to go also because my friend's going to college. Forget about that peer pressure. I'm completely okay with that peer pressure because kids got to compete and they got to learn about competition. The peer pressure that I do have a problem with, and I think no one is addressing, is the peer pressure of parents having to keep up against other parents. So it's, it's almost like a brother saying, well, my kids and my sister's kids went to such and such school. I have to make sure my kids do this because my kids have to do better than my brother's kids or my sister's kids or my best friend's kids and all this stuff. And I don't care how much it's going to cost me to go into because they pay $200,000. Honey, we'll refinance and take out a mortgage to pay for our son's school because we have to say our son went to USC. That family may be making $600,000 a year. This family can't afford to do refinance because that's a retirement money, but through peer pressure, they do it just to keep up with their best friend or their sister or their brother, and they pay for that college. I have a problem with that. And the last peer pressure that I believe is, is those who work in the educational space, You know, those who are professors, teachers, a dean, and, and you have to protect your argument because sometimes... You know, if you're single, you have to make a case why it makes sense to become single. If you're married, you have to make a case why everybody needs to be married. You ever hear the story, you know, married people recruit married people. Single people recruit single people. Divorced people recruit them. It doesn't matter. We recruit because we want to make a case that we made the right choice doing what we did. That's totally fine. Sometimes educators are, because you're only in that world, the only thing you think is the most valuable thing is education. And that's really not the case. It's cost on a lot of families, a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, and I think it needs to be addressed. And I'm going to make a case for it today, and I'll be almost like an attorney, and I'll make my case. You be the judge, you be the jury, and you can take all the shots you want at me. I will address all your questions. I post a question on my website, patrickbaydavid.com. I got ton of, tons of comments about this, and I'll read some of the people's comments on the bottom as well at the end of the video. Then I have a questionnaire that I'm going to share with you for you to take before you go to college. I'll share that with you at the end as well. So let me get right into it. So first, first things first. Who, in my opinion, should stay in school and continue school because they need college? One, anybody who's trying to become a professional, meaning a, a medical, doctor, dentist, nurse, RN, you need school, an engineering, civil, uh, any kind of thing that's engineering, you need to go to school, lawyer, uh, you got to go to school. You want to go into politics, all that stuff. You got to go into school to become a lawyer. And Or if you're playing sports, if you're playing sports for a school and they've given you a full ride scholarship, you may as well take advantage of it because you have a shot at going to the next level. I think you definitely need to stay in school. Second point, uh, if, you're, if you're in school and want to drop out but you're lazy, I absolutely don't recommend it. I know a lot of kids that say, Pat, I also want to drop out and I want to stay in school and I'll ask them. What's the most you've ever worked in a week? Well, I used to have a job. I worked 28 hours in a week. Stay in school. You still don't know about work ethic. Because if you don't know how to work hard, and you got to be honest with yourself, you got to stay in school to learn discipline and hard work. If you at least know how to get a degree, maybe that'll teach you about discipline and hard work. Three, 
If you're in school and you have a habit of not finishing things, stay in school. At least finish that thing if you have a habit of not finishing things. Four, if you're accepted to an Ivy League school, I think it's a good idea to go to an Ivy League school. Not everybody gets a chance to go to Ivy League school. If you go to Yale, Harvard, any of those, you ought to continue there because that's a pretty big deal to be accepted to some of those schools. Five, full ride scholarship and you are fully clear about what you want to do with your life, stay in school and I already covered the sports part. Now, who should drop out? My opinion. One, you got a strong work ethic and you're not clear about what you're doing, drop out. Two, if you're completely undecided with your career path, don't waste your parents' money. See, a lot of times undecided kids rarely use their own money. Undecided kids usually use their parents' money is what they do. And if you're a parent, I highly not discourage you supporting an undecided kid going to college because that's what you're supposed to do. Think about it this way. Um, imagine if your son or daughter comes up to you and says, Mom, I'm in love. I'm going to propose. Uh, uh, you know, Mom, I'm thinking about... Uh, 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 getting married. Okay. Uh, do you love this girl? I think I love this girl. You think you love, I think I love this girl. I mean, she's nice. She's cool. We like, both of us like the Raiders. I don't know why, but we both like the Raiders kind of cool. We like the same things. I think this will kind of work out. Um, mom, we're thinking about getting married in September and we're thinking about getting married at Hilton. We did the numbers. It's going to cost about $70,000. Can you guys help us out? What would you say to that? If you said there's no way in the world we would help pay for that wedding, then why are you paying for your kids going to college when they're undecided? What's the difference? It's an undecided decision that you're funding. Why are we funding an undecided decision? That kid needs to learn and figure something out for life and then come back to school. Whoever said people have to go to school from 18 to 22, who came out with that rule? Nobody did. You can always figure life out from 18 to 22, go do some stuff and then come back and go to school 22 to 26. You got plenty of time, right? But if it's undecided, I don't fund undecided things with my kids. Um, next, if you're great in sales and you have a gift of gap and you have the hard work, you, you, again, you're not clear about what you want to do with college, you can drop out. If you're disciplined, you know you're disciplined, you work out, you take care of your body, you're typically always good about delivering and all that other stuff. When somebody says, do this, you keep your work you're going to be okay to drop out of school. If you're extremely competitive, absolutely competitive, you're going to make it. You don't necessarily need to have uh, go to college. If you have an easy time making friends, talking to strangers, people like to hire people like that who know how to make friends and you're charismatic, charming, all that stuff, you can drop out of college as long as you have a strong work ethic. Or if you have an opportunity to work on somebody that's willing to mentor you, they're willing to coach you and know what they're knowing themselves, if someone's willing to do that, you will... Let me, let me put it to you in the sim simplest way possible. Being mentored by somebody who is absolutely established and successful is worth more than getting an MBA from the greatest school in the world. Let me say it one more time. Being mentored by somebody who is absolutely successful and has done very well for themselves is worth more than you going to the greatest school in the world if that person's willing to teach you what they know. So that's who I think ought to consider dropping out. Now, why drop out? Let's talk about why drop out. So I talk about who should stay in school, who should drop out. But why drop out? Let's talk about that. My problem with school, here's a problem that I have with school. I'm going to give you first my mathematical argument. So watch the numbers here, okay? In 1971, the average house was worth $23,900. Let me say it one more time. The average house in 1971 was worth $23,900. Today, the average house is worth $281,500. That means it's doubled roughly 12 times. Pay attention to the double number. So what a house was worth in 71, it's doubled 12 times. Now, our income in 1971 was $10,600 in 1971. Our income today, according to the Department of Labor, is $53,657, which means our income's doubled five times. So our income's doubled five times, but the cost of a house has doubled 12 times. Now, stay with me here. The average cost of a four-year tuition to a nonprofit, to a nonprofit, private nonprofit university, four-year, average cost per year was 1831 in 1971. Matter of fact, Harvard was $2,600. I'll put all the link to the information on the bottom. $2,600. But the average university was 1831. Today in 2015, the average tuition to a nonprofit private school it's $31,231. That's 17 times double is what we're talking about. 17 times it's doubled. A public college uh, 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 was 
per year was public four-year college was $500 per year. A public today is 9139 That's an 18 times double that I'm giving you. This is a CNBC article uh, with cost of living for college. So let me get this straight. Tuition has doubled 17 or 18 times. Cost of a house has doubled 12 times. Our incomes doubled five times. And parents are still pressured to pay for the schooling of their kids and use their own retirement money and count on Social Security, which is probably not going to be able to be activated at the age of 65 because when they first came out with Social Security and they came out with the age of 62, people were only living to 62. So they were not expecting people to live. So now parents have to use up their money for kids' college, education, and retirement. Later on, have to work till 75, 80 years old because we're living longer. And you know who gets stuck with that? Who do you think has to support parents then? Kids then have to support parents, which the ripple effect could cause kids to get a divorce. One, parents, do you want your kids to get a divorce? And two, kids, do you want to take care of your mommy and daddy for the rest of your lives? That's a serious decision that's got to be made on both parties. Now, let me give you another number here that bothers me. With college, it's become a business. It's become an epidemic, right? Here's another one. Average kid spends $1,200 a year in books. $1,200 a year in books. Some textbooks are $200 a book. I, got, I went and got a hold of the most expensive book, $200. Contacted my publisher. I said, how much would a book like this cost if I wanted to make 5000 of this copy of this book? They looked at it, they came back, they said $6 a book. I said, let me get this straight. So this school gets the book, it costs them $6 to make it, and they expect our kids and parents to pay $200 for this. That's 33 times more on what it costs to make money. Schools want to say capitalism sucks. I mean, schools are using the capitalistic system at a whole different place. I understand wholesale and markup, but marking up from $6 to $200, that's embarrassing. Apple Computers doesn't do that, let alone a college university's charging that kind of money. That's pathetic. And you ought to share this with other people. And the stats on these numbers are also on the bottom. That's also in that same study done by, done by CNBC. Cost of books have gone up 82%, 82% since 2002. That's three times the rate of inflation. If I could invest into college books, I would buy the stock college books. We'd become millionaires if we did something like that. That's what the cost is. I also believe colleges are producing followers. I don't believe they're creating uh, leaders. It's a lot of just somebody talks, 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 talks. Yes, 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 yes. It's a lot of creating uh, followers. I'm not saying everybody. Some of well, you know, and say, I went to school and they talk. There's a lot of great professors out there. I'm not talking everybody. But generally, the system isn't producing what it's supposed to be producing. And it's costing way too much money to produce the results that they're telling us they're producing. For it's become a political game. Many universities, it's all about a recruiting to a political agenda that, uh, agenda that they have. Read this book, do this, this. And then they recruit to a certain political party. And you've got to kind of pay attention to that as well. Five, colleges have become a business. I don't know why we need to go to college for four years. You know, kids tell me, so Pat, do you think if I'm majoring in business, I should go to school and get my four-year degree? I said, I don't believe in four years. And I was even with Mark Cuban a couple weeks ago, and I asked him, I said, what do you think about people who say you should drop out of college? He says, I think they're idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. I said, why? He said, because you should go to college, because you got to learn accounting. you got to learn these classes. I said, so let me restate my question. Do you believe college kids need to go to college to get a four-year degree? Or do they need to go to college just to take these classes? He says, no, then you're probably right. They just need to take these classes. You can watch that take of what he says in the interview, Patrick Bay, David, Mark Cuban. We'll put the link on the bottom. You'll see that part when he says that as well. I don't think somebody who's majoring in business needs to take physics. I don't think that. I think some of the mandatory classes kids need to take to get a four-year degree is a waste of time. I would rather have our educational system be changed and we rally behind it. And instead of requiring four years to get a bachelor's degree in business, why don't we make it 18 months? You know, instead of taking four years, I understand if you're going to go do surgery on my heart, you need a lot of years and watching a lot because a lot of details. I understand this is details, dentist. I understand building a structure is a lot of details. That's years. You're not going to learn it in 6, 12, 18 months. I get that. But business, four years, what for? What for? It just makes no sense to me, right, with a lot of these courses that we take. I'm not a fan of both parents and students getting into major debt. Think about it. Whether the parent pays for it, it's going to take them years to pay, or they're going to take years away from retirement. If the kid's got to take, pay for it, it could take them 20 years to pay for it. We, we deal with student loans. And I see how many kids and how many marriages are just stuck paying $1,500 a month, $1,100 a month, $900 a month of their college loan. That affects the marriage. That affects buying a house. That affects a lot of other things just because they were told you got to go get a four-year degree. You know what's the weirdest things about most people that I sit with that have degrees? Their jobs generally has nothing to do with their degree. 
I hire people left and right with my company. We have 2,000 agents roughly that work for our firm in 30-something states. Most people that have a degree, their current job has nothing to do with the degree they got. Nothing to do with the degree they got. So now, let me continue. Someone will say here, um, Patrick, I don't care what you say. I'm a parent and I'm going to pay for my kids' school and no matter what because we have a tradition in our family. Everybody went to USC. Everybody went to University of Texas. We're all alumni of Texas A&M. We're all alumni of Florida State. We're all alumni of NYU. I totally get it. Totally fine. How much money did you make last year? Well, we, we do well. We make uh, uh, somewhere around a million dollars. Ma'am, you make a million dollars. You can afford to risk $200 with $200,000 of kids going to school. Is that really going to affect your retirement? No, not really. We're set forever. An average family making one fifty a year, $200,000 over a four-year period, that's a lot of money. So this message isn't for the people that are making a million a year and up. We can afford that. I'm talking general families who are sacrificing every single thing to give everything they got for their kids and the kid goes to school and is undecided and either drops out and they're still responsible for that debt and they're stuck with that savings. That's the, that's the problem that I have with, uh, with any of that stuff. Now, let me, let me get into the next part here. Why are we going to college in the first place? So parents say, well, I want my kids to go to college. Or kids say, I want to go to college. And why do you want to go to college? Well, I don't want my kids to miss out on the, on the fun partying side of life and college and fraternity and all this other stuff. I don't really think you need to go to college to party. You don't need a degree to learn how to party. Quite frankly, I went to the army and, and, and my army stories of partying, every time I talk to other kids who went to school and they tell me they're crazy partying, it's not even close to the way we partied in the army. It's just night and day. So if you want your kids to really party, send them to the military. They'll really learn how to party when they're in uniform and how people look at them in uniform. I'm sure your son's going to really appreciate it if you send them to the army. So the fun part, it doesn't require a lot of discipline to party. Thursday night is lady nights for anybody. Thursday night, ladies night is pretty much in every single state in America. Kids are going to find a way to party from 18 to 25. That's just going to happen. Two, well, I want them to get the experience. What experience? Quite frankly, I have a challenge with one thing with college. My challenge with college is we're being taught someone on business that's never ran a business before. Why would somebody teach business that's never ran a business before? Why would somebody teach some things that they've never done before? Why would we want our kids to learn what if the setup was a complete different way of a setup? Well, then maybe that makes sense, and I'll talk about that a little later on in the subjects that I think we ought to teach. You know, I want my kids to go to college because they get to network in college. Really, yeah, I think they get to network in college and meet other people. Networking and meeting other people is not because of college. It's because your kid is good at doing that. I promise you, if a person is not good at networking, they're not going to be good at networking if we put them in the military, if we put them in college, if we put them anywhere. They're just not going to be good at networking. Now, if you think they're going to get better at networking because they're going to drink beer and loosen up, well, that's a different story. Anybody can loosen up by drinking a beer and networking better. I'm talking purely to network. Networking is something a good person is good at doing. I was in the military. There were soldiers that never spoke to anybody. And I was in the military. There were people that talked to everybody. Same goes with college. To get a good job, nowadays, quite frankly, with the amount of uh, inventory of people that have degrees on Career Builder or Monster or any of that stuff, I don't think we're lacking the amount of people with degrees that are unemployed for an employer to hire. I don't think we're lacking that. So your kid getting a degree or you getting a degree, if you think that's going to give you an edge on everybody else, as a CEO myself, I don't even look at the degree that you have from school. I simply sit there and ask him your life experiences. What trials have you gone through? What challenges have you faced? What have you overcome? What are some of your biggest victories in life? What languages do you speak? What countries have you been to? What's the hardest thing you ever overcame? That's what I want to know. I don't even look at your degree that you get. I don't. I look at those types of things when I'm hiring somebody. And I'm a CEO myself as a, a running a company. We look at that. Uh, another one is my parents said so. You know, my parents said so is something that, um, you know, as much as we try to sit there and talk about that whole thing, I talked about parents peer pressure earlier. Sometimes parents peer pressure. It's a video definitely I, I suggest parents to watch. And listen, parents, please send messages if you disagree with this. Please. But all I'm asking for is for people who are watching this, talk about this. Debate this. Break this argument down. At the dinner table, say, I want to talk about a video I watched. Do you agree with it? I totally disagree with the guy and break it down. We're going to come out with good resolutions if we talk about these things. Somebody says, uh, why are you going to college? I'm, I'm clear on my career. Perfect. I support it. You ought to continue going to college. 
I want to figure out what I want to do. Absolutely not. Drop out. You're not spending mommy's money or your money trying to figure something out in college. And uh, I would suggest kids, listen, I've partied hardcore in my life. I partied a lot. I had a lot of fun with my life. And uh, I just didn't want to waste my parents' money because my parents sacrificed everything they had to come to America. And when we were living in Iran, as a Christian family living in Iran, it was very difficult. And when Khomeini died six weeks later, we escaped. We went to a refugee camp in Germany. And then from Germany, we came to the States here. And they got a divorce. It was very difficult for them. And then I served the military. The last thing I wanted to ask my parents is for money. I didn't want to ask my parents for money because I wanted to kind of uh, prove to them that I can survive on my own. So I knew when I was partying hard, I didn't want them to pay for my partying. And if you're somebody that's doing that, man up and uh, woman up and go to your uh, parents and tell them and say, Mom, Dad, I think you guys are wasting your money putting me through college. Here's why. I'm just not disciplined. Be honest with them. You have no idea how much respect you'll gain from them by doing that. So with that being said, with that being said, now, my opinion on what we ought to do before dropping out of college. So someone says, you know what, Pat? I get messages. Pat, I so agree with you. This is why I'm dropping out of college. You're absolutely right. Wait, wait, wait. Before you drop out of college, I have some points before you drop out of college. One, you got to have a source of income. you got to have a source of income before you drop out of college. It's not just they join this, uh, you know, uh, exciting new thing. I'm going to drop out of college. I don't want any responsibilities. This message has nothing to do with responsibilities. My, behind me, it says read. I, I've read over a thousand books. So don't think this is like kumbaya. I'm joining this club of dropping out of college because I'm going to go be a billionaire. Uh, Zuckerberg become, didn't become a billionaire because he wanted to drop out of college because he didn't want responsibilities. He dropped out of college and worked 120 hours a week is what he did. Big difference. Remember this. Jobs worked his butt off. So all these entrepreneur heroes that people have behind closed doors before they became a hero, they worked very hard. So before dropping out, you got to have a source of income. Two, learn sales. If you don't know sales, learn sales. If you kind of want to get disciplined, you don't have a lot of discipline, I highly, highly endorse military. Air Force would be my first choice because they're all about education coming out of Air Force. Then it would probably be Navy, Army, Marines. And no, I'm, listen, I'm Army and I'm putting you three because I just think they got to focus a little bit more on education. And I don't necessarily think Army and Marines spend as much time uh, on education as they ought to. Air Force definitely does. It's a great experience. They treat you like, you know, uh, they treat you royally in the Air Force. You almost live like you're living in a hotel. They change your bed. It's very different than being in an Army life living in the barracks and Marines. Anyways, the lifestyle's getting better uh, regardless. The other day I went to 101st Airborne Division, the unit I was at, I didn't even recognize it because it didn't look like barracks. It looked like a Holiday Inn hotel. It's a complete different life. They're providing for our military servicemen. Many CEOs, many CEOs, many politicians, many presidents served in the military before. It teaches a lot about independence and discipline. Travel the world. I'm a big fan of traveling the world. I constantly tell people, go see the world. You know, if you are undecided and you have work ethic, get a backpack, partner with somebody. Don't go by yourself. Go experience what it is to live in Europe. Go experience what it is to live in uh, uh, Brazil. Go experience what it is to live in Canada, live in UK. Go work for a different, learn the culture, learn, learn the community. Have that experience. When somebody sits in front of me, I'm interviewing, and they tell me, I lived a year in UK, I lived a year in Spain. I'm fascinated by it. I know how to speak Spanish. I went on a mission. I, I am fascinated by it. And I like that because... In a way, that person may not be 48 years old, but that person has more of a worldly experience than a 48-year-old who's never been out of the country. That, to me, is a lot of value than a four-year degree. I put it there. I put it there because I think there's a lot of value to it. Work under a CEO for free and listen to everything he tells you. Work under a CEO for free. Whatever she tells you or he tells you, listen, learn, learn from them, okay? Work for an entrepreneur for free while having a source of income. Because you can always do the college thing from 22 to 26. I think sometimes the challenge that we have is we put all kids uh, in one box. It's just one system everybody has to follow. Think about if we have four kids. You and I have four kids together, okay? Or you and your wife or you and your husband have four kids. One of your kids, every time you watch your kid, this kid will watch a Pat movie over and over and over again. He watches 300 over and again. He watches Braveheart, Patriot, Saving Private Ryan. You know, he's always uniform, all this stuff. Maybe your kid wants to join the military. Let him. Watch what they want to do and develop their strengths and their calling. Not because you went to school. Let the kids see maybe military is their route. You watch a kid and I go, this kid is just all about, you know, friendly with everybody. He goes and networks with everybody. He goes and shakes hands with everybody. He's so good, smile, charm, all this stuff. Maybe he's an entrepreneur. You know, he, you know, entrepreneur. Maybe you got a kid that's always like arguing with you, constantly debating with you. Maybe that kid's an attorney. 
Maybe that kid needs to also go be an entrepreneur, run a business, because he's going to make him a good negotiator, right? Maybe you got a kid that's always curious about health and how are you? How are you doing, mom? Are you feeling good? Maybe that's a doctor, got nursing. Maybe there's a connection there. But pay attention and don't put them in the box thinking every kid is going to be in the same. Uh, if a kid loves politics, if you got a kid at four years old, six years old, enjoy listening to Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, or Anderson Cooper, or Rachel Maddow, and you're like, what is this kid doing listening? Maybe they're like politics. Maybe it's college to pursue politics in the future. But not everyone fits the same mold on what they need to be doing. Now, this is the subject that I would be teaching if I was running a university today. And I think we need to be teaching the subject. There was a song that I saw uh, recently. Somebody shared it with me. I'll put the link of the song on the bottom. Video's got six and a half million views. A kid talks about drop out of school and stay in school, something like that. Uh, let's put the link on the bottom that they can see it as well, Paul, uh, is what we'll do. You can see he made a lot of good arguments on what you need to be worried about about, about life. But if I'm running a school and I have a university, I want to see what are the biggest problems we're facing in the world right now, and I'm going to teach that. For instance, marriage. Two out of three marriages in America end up out of divorce. How about we talk about it? How about we explain, listen, here's marriage. Let's talk about marriage. Why do we even get married in the first place? What's the purpose of marriage? Is it just tax purposes? Is it to have kids? Is it because why? I would process marriage, and I would talk about bringing people who have been married for 30 years, have a successful personal life, have raised good kids, and I would have three, a panel of three parents where it's a six-hour panel, and kids talk to them. And they're talking about marriage, what works, problems, maybe issues they went through that they're willing to be vulnerable and share with the kids. Kids are going to remember that. They're adults at that time, 18, 19, 20 years old. We need to talk about marriage. We need to talk about those types of things in universities, in colleges. I would send my kids to your school if that was the case, if you're going to teach those type of things and there's a panel to it, not just somebody getting up and talking about how to have a good marriage and they've never been married before. We have too many experts nowadays. How they're talking about what they've done, you know, here's what you need to be, have a successful marriage. They've been divorced 17 times. No, I want somebody that's going to talk about marriage that's been married 30 years. I want a personal trainer that's in shape. I want an entrepreneur giving me advice that's actually running a business. I want somebody who knows what they're doing, right? Two, I'd have somebody getting up there talking about taxes, how to position yourself to pay the lowest amount of taxes, how to position yourself to pay the highest amount of taxes, how benefits of having your own business. If you have your own business, you get tax write-offs and you can do this. And I would get details about positioning yourself for taxes. I would talk about that because you need to educate. Kids come out of, oh my gosh, I'm paying taxes? What is this all about? Then they're confused. We need to teach that. Three, money. I spent a lot of time talking about money. And I'm not talking about economics class. Here's a stock. A stock is a certificate of ownership. CD is a certificate of deposit. No, no. Specific. Specific. Here's short-term plan, mid-term plan, long-term plan. Here's a mutual fund. Here's why an annuity makes sense. Here's an insurance policy. Here's why you need life insurance. Here has, here's how good 401k. This is why if a company doesn't offer this, look for this. If a company's offering that, look for that. If they're not matching, do this. Specifics to the T. And I would bring people who are money managers to explain what would you do if you were 19, 20 years old to make sure by 45 years old you're set financially or 55 years old. And I would have three experts with three different philosophies teaching, not the professor, professionals is who would be teaching to them in the subject of finance. Another thing I'd be teaching, I'd be teaching kids how to vote. You know, a lot of kids don't know how to vote. They're just kind of sitting there saying, well, do I vote Republican, Democrat, this? You know, am I a Democrat because my family's a Democrat? My Father's a Republican. What do I do? I don't know what to do. So I would have, I would have a Republican, a Democrat, and an independent come. Put them up there. Pick the top 20 most important issues that they debate and pose the questions with no interference from the professor. Let them debate for three hours. Let them go at it. And we're learning. And you're processing and saying, that guy's argument makes sense. This, why is that guy getting nervous? Why is he bickering? Maybe there's a reason. Let me ask him another question. They're going to learn more about their own political beliefs when they see the debate taking place. And I would do this three different times with different personalities. So it's not the strongest Democrat wins or the strongest Republicans wins. I would get different personalities. Somebody wins each time. A different person wins. And then they're going to be able to assess which one makes sense to them. I would have a capitalist, a, a communist, and a socialist debate in front of the kids. I would pay $100,000 a year for my kids to go to that school. The other thing I would do is religion. A lot of times professors 
will lean towards atheism or agnostic or certain religion and they will impose that on their kids and they'll mock maybe someone who believes in God or vice versa, somebody who doesn't believe in God. Regardless, I would have an atheist, a Christian, a Catholic, a Mormon, a Jehovah, a Muslim. It doesn't matter. Debate. And maybe the kid at the end is going to come out and say, everybody's saying the same thing. Maybe the kid's going to come out and say, wait a minute, it sounds like everyone agrees. So let me ask you a question. What do you guys think feel about this? What do you guys think about this? What do you guys think? There's a lot. So what is, who is the real truth? Why is your religion the truth? Why? Then they're going to be able to make an assessment for themselves. Parenting. We have problems with parenting. Why don't we start teaching kids how to parent as adults, young adults at 18, 19 years old? Yes, teaching them how to raise kids, teaching them how to discipline kids, not by professors. Teaching them by a person who has raised great kids, been married for 30 years, raised great kids, teach them and give examples and then bring the kids that have done very well and they talk about how their parents raised them. So maybe have the kids there and have the parents there and kids are asking questions. These 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds are asking questions. Hey, how about this? How about when you go through this? How about when you go through it? Here's what we did. My dad did this. What happened when you got a bad girl? What did your dad do? What happened? Let them learn. And then these parents are also going to say, don't expect to go back home and say your parents are not perfect. Call your mom and dad and say, hey, your mom sucks. Your mom, dad has no clue how to parent. That. No. They're also going to say, don't expect perfection from your parents. So you're going to also sit there and the kid's going to say, you know what? I've been so hard on my mom and dad, man. I need to call and tell my mom how much I love her. Yeah, I need to call my dad and tell And then it's also, I'm going to learn how to parent my kids like this. I'm going to do this. They're going to pick up. These are life decisions. People make divorces. They file bankruptcies. They have tax liens. They get audited. They, 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 get, they get into heated, heated debates and battles and arguments over politics. They get into major arguments over religion. They lose their relationship with their kids because nobody is teaching this stuff when we're in college and school. Why not universities? Why not professors? Now, you may say, we teach it at my school. Why not raise the standards and teach it at all schools? How come this is not part of curriculum? I say we add it to the curriculum. That's what I'm saying, to add it to the curriculum. If you want my three and a half year old and two year old right now, and I got one in the oven right now, if you want me as a parent to say, yeah, I'm gonna send my kids to schools, why don't we do something about that curriculum now? So by then we're endorsing kids going to school. Okay, maybe we, need, we are gonna send our kids to school for four years, because you're teaching this stuff. Because you're doing these things that we need to be doing. So that's my opinion on what I think about college. They're very strong opinions. I don't expect you to fully agree with everything. I, I may be wrong with every one of the things I shared. I could absolutely be wrong with everything I shared with you here today, and I'm okay with that. All I'm saying is let's open the discussion and start talking about these types of things. Now, I want to share a couple of comments I got when I got the, uh, wrote the question and I said, why should somebody drop out or stay in school? I got a few different stories. I'll share three of them with you very quickly. First one is Douglas Dale, who's a managing partner in Arizona somewhere. And he, come, he came back and he said this, when it comes down to it, I'm a recent graduate with two degrees, one in business and one in communication. While I would agree that any and all of skills I learned could have been obtained in the real world, there is still quite a bit that couldn't learn that I did in education. More employers look for degrees to create a benchmark within their businesses, while others look for experience when it comes down to society. We are all on unlevel playing field. Either you have a degree or experience, but neither is more correct than the other. It really depends on the career choice you make as the individual. I was raised on education and told that uh, at my bank, I need to get a degree. I am now in process of getting my dual MBAs because I see it as a good route for me and my career. Good for you, Douglas, and a great argument. Here's Pablo from Spain. He's a first officer at Norwegian Air Shuttle. He said, I have a college degree, but I really think that it was not really useful and didn't prepare me for what I went through under, in the real world. I have learned everything with experience, but I think college gives you some skill that could help you later on in life. Thank you, Pablo from Spain. Here's uh, Tokazoni. Maloka from South Africa, okay? He said, I'm a dropout, not because I wanted, but I didn't have enough money to fund my education. I was only left with two subjects to complete my degree. This has been a blessing in disguise because since I left school, I was placed the value hard work above all this. This has brought me closer to many opportunities. I was always, uh, uh, I always have to work hard because I'm not a graduate, regardless of how much I know being a dropout also helped me understand that the real world owes me nothing. Good for you uh, with that type of a mindset. Here's the last one I'll read to you. Antonio Rubio said he works in Lima, Peru. Hello, Patrick. College is an important and beautiful stage, but if you only plan, uh, if you only plan to rely on a degree, this is very evil. Today, the people live in the safety of the house, then move to the safety of the college, then move to the safety of a company, and the problem is that they're 
people don't live and don't take experience in the real world, don't expand the context and realities, don't achieve their full potential, they are safe. How we're in college, you have the opportunity to make friends, build relations for the future, learn to read and create the habit a bit more. But the principal problem that I see in college is the fact that they, we are evaluated on independent ratings and we tend to uh, be alone and not cooperate with a group. Interesting, in the real world, to grow and to succeed, we need to cooperate and work with them as a team. And you know it, the college is a good thing. Good and important thing, uh, and it's only my opinion, but the system is old. It would be good for students that they choose their courses and make the perfect per, make the perfect career for themselves and evaluate the rating by groups. Create the system and a challenge is a challenge, but it is uh, better for the future. So I pass the ball on colleges and invite them to take up the challenge and making of making a modern valuation plan. Wow. Thank you, Antonio from Lima, Peru. Very, very impressed with your uh, uh, comments by everybody. I welcome you to comment. I welcome you to debate. I welcome you to share this video with college students, with high school kids, with parents, with anybody who's an educator you, uh, involved in that world, and even any politicians that you know to hear this concept out and start talking about it. All around the world, this is not something that's just an American thing. This is a worldly thing that we need to improve in and start talking about things that really, really matter. So here's my challenge to you. If you're somebody that's thinking about going to college, you're currently in college or you're a parent, Go to my website, patrickbaydavid.com. I have a questionnaire prepared for you to ask. It's called Stay in School or Dropout Test. Stay in School or Dropout Test. And it's a questionnaire to go through and you get a score at the end. And based on that score, it'll tell you to either stay in school or drop out. And once you take the test, I encourage you to share it with other people and have other people take the test and share this video with them as well. Again, if you have any questions, comment on the bottom. I will definitely be getting back to you personally when I have a chance to. Thanks for watching.